Hey, my name's Tim, and we're talking about Ansem's ontological argument. Most importantly uh, to talk about is we need to discuss what is an ontological argument. Um, it's one of the three major kinds of arguments for the existence of God, along with the cosmological and teleological. Um, as opposed to cosmological and teleological, the ontological argument relies on a priori knowledge as being the basis of the proof. Uh, it typically deals with beings of God, which is why it's called ontological. Um, for instance, a necessary being or a perfect being. Um, and from those qualities, the argument is going to try to drive a necessary existence. Major proponents of the ontological argument include Anselm, Descartes, Leibniz, Gödel, and Plantinga, while some major opponents include Guenillo, Aquinas, Hume, and Kant. Anselm's ontological argument uh, is built off two premises. One, God is that which nothing greater can be conceived, and two, if that which nothing greater than can be conceived exists only in the intellect, it would not be that which nothing greater can be conceived, since it can be thought to exist in reality. Therefore, it follows that God must exist in reality. This is built upon an implicit premise that existing is better than not existing, which is ultimately derived from Aristotle. This argument was first critiqued by one of Anselm's contemporaries, Guanilo, another fellow uh, monk. Guanilo criticized Anselm by employing a reductio to prove the existence of a lost island, um, and this lost island was the best of all possible islands on it. There was more uh, fruit and things per square inch and stuff like that, um, which ultimately is, of course, kind of silly, and that's the point of reductio. Um, it shows that if this argument can lead us to a conclusion of a lost island that is the greatest conceivable island, which must exist, then so must God exist, but we wouldn't say that the greatest conceivable island must exist, so neither must God. Ansem's response to this was that his argument only applies to things with necessary existence. Only a being with necessary existence can fulfill that which nothing greater than can be conceived, uh, parameters of Ansem's definition. Therefore, it wouldn't apply to things such as a lost island, because those things are contingent and can always be improved upon, and thus can never reach the state of perfection necessary for the argument to follow. Aquinas' criticisms, um, they're threefold. One, people cannot know the nature of God, and therefore cannot conceive of God in the way Anselm proposed. Anselm's argument required of us to conceive of God a priori, one, but two, in a very full way, in the sense that an understanding of what it means to be greater than that which nothing can be conceived. Um, and because of that, uh, Anselm, who doesn't think that those types of knowledge claims are accessible to humans, would reject the argument. Secondly, Anselm's ontological argument would only be meaningful to someone who completely understands the essence of God. Um, and since that only person is God, only God could run the ontological argument to prove to himself that he exists, but come on, that's not very helpful. Um, and finally, Aquinas' rejection of this argument led to other Catholic theologians rejecting it as well. Um, and by other, I mean almost all of them. Hume came to criticize ontological arguments as a whole as well, and in doing so, um, criticized Ansem's ontological argument on two fronts. Um, one, nothing can be proven exists using only a priori reasoning, uh, according to David Hume. Um, as an empiricist, obviously, uh, he's not wanting to get anything out of these deductive type arguments um, because for him knowledge comes through impressions of the world. Um, the second uh, reason why an ontology argument such as this couldn't fly for David Hume was that we have no abstract idea of existence where Aquinas wanted to shut down the argument because we can't have a true understanding of God. Hume is going to say that we can't have a true understanding of existence um, and so we cannot claim that the idea of God implies his existence since we don't understand it. Kant also came to criticize uh, ontological arguments, um, arguing that necessary propositions, such as a triangle has three sides, are only true if that object exists. Um, and so a claim that it is necessary that God would exist is only true if that object, God, exists. Therefore, Ansem's argument truly shows, according to Kant, that if God exists, it exists necessarily, um, which isn't a strong argument. Kant also criticized Ansem's argument in that Ansem takes a God's existence to be an analytic predicate, um, which cannot say anything about reality. Uh, by analytic predicate, Kant means a predicate that is based upon the definition or 
the factual nature of the thing itself, not necessarily um, such as a synthetic predicate, a thing that is based on outside information found in the sentence that is prescribing the predicate. Finally, Kant argues that being itself is not even a predicate, and so um, that's that. The last major interaction with Anselm's ontological argument would be Gödel's formalization of it. Uh, Gödel attempted to formally codify his modified version of the ontological argument, um, and in doing so, proved that the argument was valid, um, and actually that he accomplished that. The argument is logically valid, although the axioms that Gödel presumes are disputed, uh, with most most especially being his notion of positive properties. And here is the actual proof itself. Don't ask me what it says. I have no idea. That's all. Thanks for listening.